the Cerebral Mind program, we're going to start a new case that we can scan in. We can do that by hitting the New button, and then we'll start filling out the order, filling out what customer, the name of the patient, and then choosing what technician is working on the case. All of these can be edited uh, with the buttons to the right. After choosing your unit, you'll choose the type of restoration and what milling machine this is going to be produced in. Then you'll choose what material you want to mill in and fill out any additional information you need. The only required field is the shade. After that, we're going to set up what teeth are the adjacents so that it knows what teeth it needs to scan for your contacts. And we're also going to select the teeth so that the software knows where the opposing is going to be, called the antagonist here. After that, we'll choose what type of scanning we're going to be doing. It's perfectly fine to use any of these options. If you choose one stone model, it's expecting you to scan a byte registration as the antagonist. But today we're going to use the two stone models in occlusion and we'll just uh, hold them in occlusion using a rubber band. After that, our case is set up and we need to save it before it will allow us to continue by going into the Ceramel map or the scanning program. Once that's open, You'll hear your scanner move around and go back to its home position, and it'll prompt us to put in our first arch. It usually will start with the prep arch, regardless of whether it's the upper or the lower. For our first scan, we're going to put our upper arch model on our plate and tighten it down using the head screw at the back. After the clamp is secure, you should be able to put that into the scanning uh, chamber. It should hold down very securely with the magnet. After this, back at the computer, we're going to choose which spacer plate is in place. Um, your spacer plates should be labeled on the front, so if you look in your scanner, you'll see the number 1, 2, or if you have both plates, we would choose the 1 plus 2 option. In this case, I have these one spacer plate in, and I'll start that 2D scan. This is going to take a very quick picture of the model, and now we're going to tell the software where each tooth number is. You can right-click to drag all of your dots, and then left-click to move the individual dots into place. These don't have to be exact, they just have to be roughly over the middle of the occlusion of each respective tooth. We'll hit continue, and the software will take some more detailed 3D scans. Now that that's finished, it wants us to isolate different pieces of the model so it can take even more detailed scans. What it means by isolate is simply just remove anything that is not highlighted in the picture on the computer. So in this case, it wants me to remove everything except for the contacts, tooth 2 and tooth 4. Right now I only have the die itself section, so that's the only thing I'm going to remove. We'll hit continue, and it'll continue scanning those additional areas. After that's finished, it's now going to prompt us to isolate uh, different elements, because it always has you isolate every other object. 
So now we're going to remove the two adjacent sections of our model that we had left in previously and put in just the die on its own. Once we've got that unit in place, we'll continue again and it'll take more detailed scans of our prep. After that, we have a couple options now that we're finished with the um, prompted steps of the upper jaw. I can either continue forward if I trust that this scan will be compiled together how I want, or if I want to take a closer look at what our final result will be, I'm going to hit the matching button. Again, this is not required since it should match everything together at the end of the software of the scan. Once the matching has been finished, we can take a look and we can see that the scan has been smoothed out considerably from the original scans that it had completed earlier. You may still see some areas with holes in them, but we only need to fill those in if they were in an important area. In this case, I'm going to fill them some unneeded areas in with the Add Scans button. I'll adjust my view until the green crosshair is over the area I want filled in, and then hit the play button at the bottom to have it take a new screenshot. You can continue taking more of these just by adjusting your view and angle and hitting the play button again. If you were ever in an angle that is not able to be reached by the scanner, the green crosshair will turn red. We can also clean up our scan data by using the Cut Inwards and Cut Outwards tools. Whenever you use the Cut Inwards, you're going to draw a circle by clicking dots and right click to uh, confirm your choice of shape and it will cut out whatever was inside of what you drew. The cut outwards is very similar. You draw around the area you want to keep and it will cut away everything outside of that area based on your current view. So usually the fastest way is from a side view to use either the cut outwards or cut inwards to take away the bottom half of the scan that isn't required. Once I'm finished with my extra tools, I can hit continue, even if I already hit the matching, and it'll have me continue to our next arch. So we'll do the same thing as before put in the lower arch by clamping it down onto our fixture. Once it's secure, we'll put it in the scanner and choose on the computer the spacer plate one again and start our 3D scan. Once that's finished, I'll double check that there isn't any missing data in the area we're going to be working and I'll trim away any unneeded sections. After both arches are completed, it now wants our arches in occlusion because I chose the two models in occlusion option. So what we're going to do is put the, uh, the units in occlusion. In this case, I have an articulator that I know keeps it at the correct angle. And then I'm going to use a rubber band in this situation to hold them in occlusion, despite the scanner moving it around. 
You can also use things like glue or putty to hold it in occlusion if you believe it's secure enough that your units will not move while in the scanner. Usually a rubber band is the easiest way. This is usually the fastest of the scans, so it should complete fairly quickly. It's only capturing the buckle side of our unit, uh, so you'll never see the lingual side, and that's okay. If you feel that it didn't capture enough, you can always, again, take additional screenshots if needed. But we really don't need a lot of data for our byte scan. You may also see it capture anything you used to keep it in occlusion, in this case the rubber bands, and that's okay. We don't need to trim those away. After that's finished, if you haven't matched each of the steps, it will prompt you to match and then give you the option to close the software or continue working. I don't think there's anything else I need to modify for this case, so I'm going to start matching and close software. After that, it will load for a little bit. It usually takes about a minute or so, depending on the size of your case. And then the scan is complete and ready for design.